electricity in two days. <gasps> My goodness. Nothing. Two days, no electricity. Yeah, she had to go to her sister's house that lives on the other side of town. Her sister has electricity. Wow. But they don't. Yeah, we're wow. so glad we live in Arizona. <laughs> Yeah, I have a roommate that I used to live with in San Antonio for like a year. And um, this is like back like 2010. And I was like, hey, are you alive? Are you staying warm? And he sent me pictures of like snow covering the ground. Um, and he said that the power went out all night and um, that they got it back in the morning. I said, well, I know you're going to be fine because he has literally at least a dozen propane tanks filled. <laughs> so I don't. They go get cold. He has enough protein tanks filled for the apocalypse. I told him. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, one of our agents, he's got like uh, uh, I think half a dozen or a dozen propane tanks, and he's got a propane uh, uh, generator at his house. Um, just again, just in case, just in case there's something, right? Um, so I need to get some propanes. <laughs> And a generator. <laughs> but yeah, you know. All right, guys. Welcome. Well, the... Go ahead, Angela. I was going to say, well, like California and Washington, I think they're fading away from like the natural energy. And um, Germany did the same thing and they got screwed because they had wind and solar and they all the solar panels were covered with snow and then there was no wind so they had to start their coal plants back up wow really yeah so we can't just rely on green energy and even if there's natural gas it's worse to have it evaporate into the air versus like burning it so yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. All right, guys. Well, welcome uh, to another episode of, uh, you know, 90 Day Online Lead Mastery with your host, uh, Angela Applegate. <laughs> yeah. um, so today's topic is going to be uh, lead follow-up schedule. So you guys are doing such an amazing job of working the leads. Today, we're going to talk about how often you ought to, or you want to follow up with these leads, okay? So this is <clears throat> very simple. It's, it's really, you know, it's, it's something that you definitely want to make sure that you have it, you're implemented, especially when you are having conversations with the agents and they're telling you they're, they're 60 days out, they're 90 days out, they're six months out, they're two years out, right? Uh, this is something that I've used. Uh, a lot of other uh, producing, top producing agents, team leaders use the same type of a model, right? I did not reinvent this. I, I did not invent this. I just copied this from someone that I coached with maybe about five or six years ago, okay? Um, it works for me and hopefully it works for you as well, okay? So we categorize follow-up sequence or schedule into three different categories, right? Uh, we have hot leads, we call them A's. We have nurtures, we call them B's. And we have watch leads, we call them C's. If you guys are using Sync CRM, um, on the left side, you will find tags for each of them, okay? So for example, I know hots, we have it in red. The nurtures, we have them, uh, we have them, I think, in green and watch it thing, we have them in yellow, right, Alberto? I think I think that's that. Um, yeah, that's how that's how they're they're color coded on the okay, right. so um, anything that is hot, basically they're ready to sell or they're ready to buy a home. Like, you know, they're ready to sell uh, or buy, right? buy a home immediately in 30 days. Like, so if you're talking to someone, right? And they're like, well, uh, we, we already got pre-qualified. We, we just need to find a house. They're a hot lead. They're a hot lead, right? So with those, I mean, those usually go on my whiteboard 
those are usually go in front of me on the on maybe a sticky those are usually with me in my car and of course they are also in my crm like those are in front of me every single day like if you look at alberto's desk in addition to having them in his crm he's got a a little baby whiteboard okay and he's got all of his hot leads correct me if i'm wrong alberto all of your hot leads on that whiteboard okay susan tell him you can call back later <laughs> it's, a, it's a joint request for the hot my listy. <laughs> okay 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 uh damn you get those chime requests every time there's a listing request i mean a showing request yeah i get the calls Oh my goodness. I just put them on silent. I uh, know that's what I, you know, I think next time I'm going to do automatic. <laughs> yeah, just do automatic. Trust me. Yeah. So, they're vacant, right? Are they vacant? Yeah, it's vacant. Yeah, just do automatic. Yeah. Just do automatic. Yeah. Um, so having it in front of you is going to really help you out, guys, to be more organized. And also, again, just having them in front of you is not going to, you know, allow you to kind of forget about them. And sometimes it happens. Life gets in the way. Things happen, we're getting busier and busier, we're having more showings, we're negotiating contracts, we're putting out fires. It happens, and trust me, I've been there and I'm still dealing with it, right? So having it in front of you means a lot. It's gonna mean a lot to you, okay? So when I have a hot lead, I wanna make sure that they hear from me or they see something from me, right? Or they get a text from me, at least, once every two days or three days like you can follow up with a hot lead especially if you don't have many other hot leads you can follow up with a hot lead every single day so every day when mls sends out property alerts or every single day when sync sends out property alerts you definitely want to send them a quick text and say hey just wanted to make sure we send you a couple of properties take a look at them do you want to see any of them in person Okay, so you got to be constantly like, you know, and I don't want to use the word hounding them, but that's really what our job is. We want to make sure that we get them to the finish line. And the way we do that is we're constantly making sure that they're hearing from us, they're seeing our stuff, they're seeing our text, right? And we're getting to go and show them homes. Okay, so when you're talking to a lead in sync, make sure you utilize hot as a category it's in red, you're not going to be able to miss it. Okay, what I also do is if like I do have like five or six or seven or eight hot leads, I can actually filter by saying, hey, sync, show me all the hot leads by just clicking on that tag. And it's just going to show me all of the hot leads that I have. That helps me as well. But again, having a little whiteboard in addition to it, having something in front of you, uh, will definitely be uh, beneficial, okay? No less than every seven days. You wanna follow up no less than every seven days. Now, you may have some of these hot leads that will go a little bit cold or maybe a little bit warm, right? Uh, that's okay, that's fine. You can always move them to nurtures. You can always move them to watch. Did I spell nurture correctly, by the way? Is that spelled correctly? Nurture. Just want to make sure. Okay. You know, English is my second language. You know, not, not the first one. Like Susan's and Martha's, right? And Alberto's. And where's Ricardo, by the way? I haven't seen Ricardo. Where's Ricardo? Hey. Uh, he, he actually uh, talked to me uh, the other day. Uh, he's, he's taking his, I think he's taking his mom to, to the hospital or something. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. That's right. Conversation with him. Uh, a week ago, two weeks ago. Okay, got it. Okay, so we're recording the session so he can he can view it. Um, all right. Any questions about the hot leads, guys? No? Yeah, yeah. And, and like and like Alan said, definitely like, you know, if if things happen, if things change, just always remember to move them, move them down a notch, you know, if that's what happens. If they're now a nurture, move them to nurture. If they're now a watch, move them to watch because you don't want to go through your filters. They have 20 hots and only eight of them are really hot. And then all the other ones, we just never moved them down, you know? Um, so definitely just keep an eye on that. Uh, Cause you know, because I, I think there's drip campaigns that are assigned to the, to the, 
you know, it's the labels, right? Like there's a hot campaign and a nurture campaign. So it starts like emails and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you can create your own labels if you want to. I usually tend to leave the hot leads alone. Like I don't want any automated emails or texts to go out because I'm the one who's communicating with that lead. Like, I don't want the system to send them something. They're like, wait a minute, Alan, I just spoke to you like 10 minutes ago. You're sending me something else. Like they're confused, right? So we want to make sure that when it comes to hot leads, we don't want any drips, except of course, property alerts. Those are the ones you want to go out. Okay. But as far as the drips and text messages, it's you, it's coming from you. Okay. All right. Nurtures. Nurtures are ready to sell uh, or buy in the next 60 to, uh, to 90 days, okay? 60 to 90 days. So give me some examples, Alberta, of, of nurtures. Yeah, so I think a, a nurture would, would definitely be someone who's like, uh, who's been working with the bank, who knows what their credit score needs to be at, who knows where their monetary goal needs to be at. And, uh, you know, they're saying, hey, look, our lease is up in, in three months. Uh, or maybe even, you know, maybe even four months, because I always tell them, hey, look, a 30 day escrow, that's going to take a month at least, you know, so if you want to be moved in or, or start the process at, that's really going to determine where we're at. So um, if they're literally just waiting for the end of their lease, if they're literally just waiting for them to save up that last bit of cash, and you know, they're pretty much pre qualified, uh, and it's going to take them about a couple months or a little bit more then that's, that's a nurture, you know, it's, it's maybe not, not definite that they're going to buy in, in, you know, two or three months, but that's the goal. That's where they're going for. That's their nurture. Now they know for a fact, you know, Hey, it's going to take us way longer than three months or more than three months. You know, you can, you can move on to watch. Um, but yeah, I would say anybody who's about to get ready to hit that I'm ready to buy, or I'm ready to sell uh, in the next couple of months, that would be a nurture for sure. Right, right, right. And, and your goal really is to move them up. I mm -hmm. just want to move them down, right? right. So you want to move your watch leads to your nurture leads and then ultimately to your hot leads, right? It's almost kind of like, like, like an assembly line, right? You know, progress one, two, and three, and then ultimately the finish line, right? It's a sales funnel. It's a sales fund, all right? Uh, Alberto, if you don't mind uh, showing with the group, I mean, what some of the, the, the follow-ups um, uh, type of messages or conversations you may have with the, with the nurture leads when you call them or text them? Yeah, so the first thing I do is obviously, you know, one, make sure they're still getting my stuff, you know, that I promised I was going to be sending them. Uh, two, get, a, get an update on what's going on with their ability to sell or to buy. So if they're trying to relocate or whatever, I make sure I get an update on what's going on with that. Um, if they're a buyer, I make sure that I ask them, hey, has the lender reached out to you? You know, where are we at with, with the lending process? Are we still looking, you know, in 60 days, 90 days, whatever it is. Um, and then the other, the other important thing is I always tell them, like, hey, since we're getting closer to our date, just know that I'm going to turn up the frequency in my emails and I'm probably going to call you a little bit more frequently just so that we were in touch as we, as we, you know, get closer. Now, when we do get closer, if I haven't set up a buyer's consultation or a listing appointment at this point, which I probably should have, but if I haven't, because they've been a watch forever and now they're finally at, at that nursery stage and about to become a hot, um, that's when I set it up. That's when I definitely set it up. I'm like, Hey, look, we've been working for a while now. You know, we're, we're finally about to get ready. So how about we set up an appointment, you know, and then uh, we can go over the buying process so I can, or selling process so that way we can hit the ground running when it's time for us to go live. Okay. Would you still show homes to a, a nurture lead? Is it, uh, honestly, I, I only show them if they're pre-qualified and ready to do something. I don't know if I would show it to a nurture lead. Personally, I don't know. Would you recommend that? Um, I mean, it's completely up to you. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer that, that you have to lead with value. Okay. So one of the uh, most important values that we can present to them and give them, at least in the initial stages, um, is, is, is securing that appointment. And the way we secure that appointment is, yeah, you can invite them to the office. You can invite them for a cup of coffee, right? But ultimately, they want to see a house or two. 
right? So by showing them a house or two or three, that's going to give you the ability to make a connection with them, to hopefully build a rapport with them, show them value, what you have to bring to them, right? Uh, in addition to just showing them homes, right? Introducing to a lender. And now from that point on, they know you, the connected name with your face, they like you, they trust you, they respect your knowledge and expertise. So now I think going forward, a follow-up is going to be very smooth, right? Versus, you know, still kind of unknown. They got, who is Alberto, dude? You know, yeah, he's calling me every two weeks, but like, I don't know how he looks. I don't know where he lives. I don't know what he, I mean, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, so if you do have an opportunity to meet with them, right? Uh, and if you like, if you're seeing someone and you had a conversation with them and you're seeing someone actually looking uh, at multiple homes, right? And you, you know, they want to go out there and they want to check out a house or two. Again, it's completely up to you though. Like you're running your own business. But if you're not like super busy with other buyers, if you're not super busy doing other things, right? Show them a house, show them a house or two. I mean, that's, that's the way I would at least get my business to the point where I have like five or six or seven buyers that I'm working with, right? Now, if I got a bunch of buyers, now obviously then you have to say, well, I don't really have a time to meet with someone who's like 60 or 90 days away or 120 days away, right? It's you, it's up to you, right? But if you feel like, man, I just need to get in front of one buyer a week. I just need to get in front of one buyer every other week. Man, the best way to do it is meet them. And how do you meet them? Offer to show them a house. Was I able to answer your question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's here doing that, by the way? Just out of curiosity, who's here when you're calling the lead and you have a good conversation with that lead and you see they're looking, let's say, you know, they're looking at a bunch of homes and everything like that. And maybe they're like 60, 90 days away. Who just says, hey, you know what? I'm available tomorrow afternoon if you want. Let's, let's go and check it out, a couple of these houses. Who's doing that here? I am. <laughs> I am. Okay, so Susan's doing it. Who else? Faye. Parker. Faye's doing it. All right. Who else? Parker. Parker. Okay. All right. So, so if I may ask Susan, how many, how many, how many, how many deals are you closing right now a month? Average two. Average two. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Parker, how many deals are you closing a month? One and growing. One and growing. Okay. And then Faye, I know we talked about this. I think during our one-on-one ninety-day planning session, right? Right. We we discussed that. We said, hey, you know what? Instead of kind of, you know offering them to create a custom search and this or that, like, which you can still do. Like, Hey, like, I see you're looking at this house. I see you looking at this house. I got availability tomorrow. Do you want to go and take a look at it? Boom. Get it to the point. Get it to the point and get in front of them, right? Because ultimately that's what we want. We want to get in front of that buyer. We want to get in front of that buyer. I mean, essentially, we're doing the same thing with open houses, if you think about it. I mean, we're going out there, we're meeting a buyer. We don't even know if he or she's a buyer. We don't know if they're like serious, not serious. We don't know if they're like hot buyer or they're a watch buyer. We don't know that. We're still meeting with them. And you don't know if they have a house to sell, too. <laughs> we don't know. Exactly. We don't know if they have a house to sell, right? <laughs> so what I'm saying is don't complicate things. Right. If you see somebody and you had a good conversation with them, schedule a showing appointment. Convenience for them and the ability for you to meet them in person. OK, so that's nurtures, guys. 60 to 90 days out, follow up every 15 days. OK, schedule the reminder. You want to make sure you do this every two weeks you follow up with. All right. Number three, watch leads. Ready to sell or buy in the next 90 days. Alberto, how many watch leads do you have in your database? A lot. 
Okay. All right. So what, what, what is the most common objection or objections that you hear and you're getting, getting from them when you're, when you're actually uh, connecting with them or talking to them, right? I mean, what are you hearing from them? What are they telling you? Uh, you know, obviously, I think the more the more common one is, oh, yeah, I'm at least a year out. You know, I'm not ready yet. Uh, you know, I'm just thinking about moving to Arizona yet. You know, not sure. Got to sell my house first because it's not on the market yet. Um, that's usually the, the most common. Obviously, you'll get the other ones, but those are the more common ones that I keep getting. Not ready yet. Maybe in a year, uh, you know. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> That's when I, I automatically put it to watch. Yeah. So, so guys, uh, what do you ask them if they tell you they're not ready yet? If they're like a, a year out or six months out, eight months out, what do you ask them? One question. What needs to happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what needs to happen, right? In order for you two guys to be ready. Right? So with those, obviously, hopefully, you're going to get to the root of, of their objection, why they cannot act right now, why they cannot buy right now, okay? Um, and by asking that question, you're, you're going to be able to get to that root, right? But then what you want to do is, and by the way, this is where you can make a fortune. This is where you're going to make a fortune. This right here, you know, a lot of these buyers, when they're hot already, most likely they're already working with the agent. They are already taken by someone else. Now you still have an opportunity, right? For instance, I know Ricardo had a great conversation with a, with a buyer um, late last week. He was working with the agent. He was not happy with the agent. He felt like that agent is not responding and, and not really communicating with him. So Ricardo reached out to me and said, Alan, how do I approach the situation? And I said, look, Schedule a meeting with him. Schedule a meeting with him and let him know that you're completely opposite of that agent, that you will work around his schedule, that you're going to be super responsive. You want to earn his business. And he did. He scheduled a meeting. He went out, met him, had a great conversation. And that person said, that buyer said, yeah, I want to work with you. Okay. So there's opportunity there, even with the ones that are, I have a realtor, I'm working with a realtor. Okay. Okay. But most of you guys are going to be playing in this pond right here, realistically. Realistically, you're going to be working with a lot of these leads right here. These are 90-day-plus leads. There's a good and there's a bad with these. The good is the fact that most of them are not working with an agent. The not-so-good is the fact that it takes time. It takes a lot of nurturing requires follow-up sequences, follow-up systems, right? But if you can get this thing dialed in, and again, it's not gonna happen overnight, it's not gonna happen in a week or two. It took me, it took me a year to figure this out because the first five or six months when I started buying online leads, like I was like, dude, this is a waste of my time. Why is this? Like, like these guys are like eight months away, nine months away. Like, but when I figured this out, and this is a combination of me following up with them, allowing sync, sending them emails, text messages. Right now we have AI with Alexa that will do some work for you guys. You can make a lot of money in this, in this field right here, in follow-ups. Alberto, the people that you're working with right now, majority of them, okay, were there initially C's or there were like A's? Yeah, no, majority we're, we're, we're definitely C's to begin with. Okay. All right. And, 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 and why do you think they, 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 at the end, decided to work with you versus 40 plus other thousand agents out there? Like, what was the reason you feel like? Well, you know, a lot of them will tell me, you know, hey, man, you're, you're the only one who called me back. You're the only one who, who kept emailing me. You're the only one who, who called me and texted me like they promised they would, you know? And it was funny because a lot of the times, if, if it was like a really long watch, like a year or two, because there's people I followed up with like, you know, two years, you know, and now we're ready to do something. And they always tell me, it's like, hey, dude, you're the only one who, who called me back, who stayed in touch and, and didn't give up. And they're really grateful for it. When they feel like you didn't give up on them and everybody else did, like they're, they're going to be loyal to you till the end. So, yeah. 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 I mean, same thing with me. I mean, most of my business came from, from a lot of C's.
from a lot of C's, from a lot of watch leads, right? And I follow up every 30 days. Like if they're like a year out, I mean, you can, you can, you can, you can move them to every two months or every three months if you wanted to, right? But, but you still want to follow up with them. And that's really going to be the differentiator for you guys is the fact that you're diligently, systematically, consistently following up with them. And the cool thing about our system is the fact that you can schedule these reminders and they will appear on that day where you got to follow up with them. You don't have to keep everything ready here. That's why it's so important for you guys to add the notes and then schedule the reminders. So that day when you got to call them, it appears in front of you. Say, hey, call this guy up. You read the notes from two months ago, from three months ago. Awesome. I had conversation about him, about this, about that, about that. Let me follow up with him. Yeah, like, like what I like to do, Alan, especially like you said, for the people that are a year out, you know, I'll tell them, hey, you know, I, I get your year out. Let me set everything up for you. I'll send it to you once a month. Let me follow up with you in a couple of weeks. Make sure you're getting it. And then after that, you know, I'll, I'll follow up with you every quarter until we get closer to your date. Um, and then I'll probably, you know, intensify a little bit, but I'll let you know. And then, then, like you said, you know, the reminders are crucial because you, you know, you don't want to keep it in the back of your head and try to remember three months later, oh, you know, I got to call, you know, Joe Buyer or whatever. Yeah. Um, you put the reminder up three months later, boom, it pops up and it tells you. And I like to put a little summary of my previous conversation. Spoke to him, you know, three months ago, you know, not ready yet. Uh, just quarterly follow up, get feedback, see where we're at. So that way I don't have to go back in the notes and, and read what the last conversation is. I just go straight to the reminder. Okay, there's a summary, call them. And then, you know, so I, I, if it's a year out, what I like to do is I like to set the first three reminders. So I'll set them out three months apart. So that way when three months happen, I don't have to set up another three months apart. It literally, it's like clockwork. It's like, okay, three months from now, I'm going to call them, follow up. And another three months, call them, follow up. And then after that, it'll go to two months and then it'll go to one month since we're going to start getting closer you know, to that time frame. I want to make sure as we start getting closer to the end of that year that I'm being really aggressive and getting a hold of them, you know, before anybody else swoops in and, you know, and talks to them because they're probably going to go back on all these other websites and start looking and registering again. Yeah, yeah. And just to kind of reiterate what Alberto just said right now, like when he has that initial conversation with them and he sets up a custom search for them, he doesn't forget and call them up three months. He actually follows up with them after a week or two later, right? to make sure that they're actually getting those properties because there are times when your emails end up in their spam box. So here you, you're thinking that they're getting emails from you, but in reality, it goes to their spam box and they're thinking, he's like, oh, you know what? I spoke to Alberto and he said, he's gonna be sending me things and he hasn't sensed like, like he's probably forgot about us. You see, and trust me, I've been there before. I learned those lessons, right? So do not rely on the system like follow up with them after about a week or so or two weeks and say, hey, just making sure you're getting my emails. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, any any questions for, for Alberto, Alberto? Any questions for me, guys, before we wrap this up? I just have a quick question. Um, Yesterday, when I was talking to some people and I had good conversation, building rapport and, you know, uh, had a really good conversation, I switched my, um, the, um, I switched the, the thing from, um, from attempted contact to contacted. And then like an hour later, I got a, I got a message that the AI had started with that person. How do I turn off that AI and make sure that that doesn't happen? Mm. AI has started. It, yeah, after I had talked to the person and actually talked to them, found out what they were looking for, I changed, um, I changed it to contacted in sync. About an hour later, I got a message, a sync message that said, that AI Alex has started a conversation with that same person that I just talked to. How do I turn that off so that that does not happen? Yeah, I need to, I need to, I need to, 
I, I need to find out exactly. I mean, what triggers the AI? I'm, I I was under assumption that it will trigger it on the new uh, leads or attempted contact leads, not the ones that they already been contacted with. Yeah. You know, so but, that's what I thought, but then you know, and this guy was like, "I just talked to you." Do me a favor. Send me send me uh, the details on that lead. Uh, let us take a look at it. I, okay. Uh, I'll reach out to sync uh, support and, and, and see, you know, if something that needs to be just kind of modified or changed. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the whole point of AI is if let's say you cannot get a hold of them. Right. It will, it will do the job for you. Right. Um, you know, but yeah, just send me the information. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. Figure. Cool. Thanks. All right, guys. Well, listen, thank you so much. Let's continue working on the, on our skills, let's continue uh, tracking our numbers. Let's continue making phone calls for those agents that are making calls. Great job, guys. I'm hearing you guys, you're having great conversations. Let's have more phone calls, okay? Again, usually from, from my experience, for every 10 phone calls that you're gonna have, you're probably gonna have one to two conversations. In order for you to get in front of the buyer, okay? Book an appointment, you gotta have at least 10 good conversations. So typically that's going to be anywhere between 50 to 100 phone calls a day. 50 to 100 phone calls probably is going to take you about two to three hours, sometimes maybe longer depending on the length of the conversation, but you got to dedicate two to three hours every single day to this. Okay. So let's get it going, guys. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for attending, participating. Um, we're always here for you. Uh, Alberto is here for you. I'm here for you guys. Alberto is here usually in the office every single day in afternoon times. So if you guys want to stop by the office, he's here. All right. All right. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful day. Oh, hey, wait, yeah. Alan, I just found it where what Kelly was asking for. <laughs> um, sorry. I, if you go into the lead, and you see where their activities at there's filters and next to that there's subscriptions like there is an art artificial intelligence box you can uncheck manually oh bingo right there right there yeah good to know thank, thank you angela much. you're welcome um uh, yeah, don't forget, guys, uh, the next one, uh, I think from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, we have a Q&A with, uh, with Best Homes Mortgage. Um, and then at 10 o'clock, I know Virginia is going to be uh, doing a class on the organic Facebook uh, leads. Um, so you definitely want to want to attend that one. It's going to have a lot of nuggets, a lot of good information there. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Alan. Bye. Thank you. Have a good one, guys.